So Kenji, I work in a level one trauma center and I feel like there is so much variability when it comes to ordering kind of these routine pelvic x-rays on our trauma patients. And I know there's an art to medicine and I know it's not a one size fits all patients, but I do feel like a lot of pelvic x-rays are being ordered that don't really need to happen. And so what I want to talk about with you today is who needs that pelvic x-ray? When are these unnecessary? When do we really need them? When do they help with surgical management? I think it's a great topic. And, you know, we really are in a time of change. Um, You know, when I trained, um, it was mandatory. Every single patient that came in always got a chest and a pelvis. Mm -hmm. Actually, they got a a C-spine chest and pelvis, if you remember. So um, things have changed. And when it comes to that pelvic X-ray, um, it is definitely selective use of that pelvic chest, uh, pelvic uh, X-ray rather than a uh, mandatory use. Yep. Um, uh, so, and I, so I agree with you 100%. When it comes to the pelvis, um, there is no longer a need to do mandatory pelvic x-rays. Uh, we should be selectively using this. So to kind of tackle who needs an x-ray, who doesn't, let's go through a few cases. Case one. You have a young guy, he's on a motorcycle, he's on the freeway, hit, gets hit by a car going 50 miles an hour. He's hemodynamically stable, chest x-ray is okay, fast is negative. He's got a broken arm. You know you want to put him through the scanner. This was, you know, serious mechanism. And the tech, the x-ray tech stops you and says, doctor, do you want that pelvic x-ray? Do you want that pelvic x-ray? Because I don't, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I agree with you. This patient uh, is exactly who we're talking about. There's no additional information that you're going to get from that pelvic x-ray that you're not going to get from that uh, CT scan. So there really is no need to get it. You know, I think when you look at the pelvic x-ray, there's a couple of things that I think are really important. The first is that pelvic x-ray, the sensitivity for fractures is not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, if you use the pelvic CT scan as gold standard, it is going to miss clinically significant fractures. So that's the first reason why in this patient it wouldn't be useful. I think the second um, reason is when we look at the pelvis and pelvic fractures and the architecture of that pelvis and operative planning, the CT scan is the gold standard that's going to be used for that operative planning, not the pelvic x-ray. So really, I think in this patient specifically, they can proceed directly to getting that CT scan. And if there are very specific films that the orthopedic surgeon needs to do their operation, those can be gotten afterwards in that preoperative phase. So the answer for this patient, I agree with you 100%, is no pelvic x-ray required. Love it. Okay, so I'm not crazy. We can skip that (laughs) pelvic x-ray. They're going to go get their CT. There's nothing gained from that pelvic x-ray. Let's take another scenario where you have a 70-year-old gentleman. Unfortunately, he's crossing the street. He's hit by a car. He comes in and, I mean, he's in shock. He's pale. He's diaphoretic. He's hypotensive. You start to undress him and you see an expanding hematoma in the pelvis. His pelvis is very unstable. There's blood in the meatus. Everything points to this guy's got terrible, terrible pelvic fracture. He's he's hemodynamically unstable. He's in shock. I want to bind this pelvis because I want to try and get some of this bleeding under control. But in this scenario, should we be getting a pelvic x-ray prior to binding, because we're always taught there are some pelvic fractures that could actually make things worse if we bind them. Yeah, it's a great question. So I think in this specific patient, if they truly are unstable, and again, there's no source of bleeding in the chest and there's no source of bleeding that you can detect in the belly, the fast is negative, your confirmatory DPA, if you're going to do that, is negative, and you're worried about the pelvis and you're going to bind it, it would be helpful if you can to get that uh, pelvic x-ray. And in this patient, it's going to do a couple things for you. The first is it will help cement the diagnosis. There is a pelvic fracture, and this is a, a very good potential source of that blood loss. And then number two, exactly what you said. 
Um, there are specific fracture patterns, and I'm thinking about these lateral compression fractures yeah. where it's just a wing fracture or a focal acetabular fracture where technically applying a binder may not do as much positive and it may potentially make that injury worse. So if possible, in this patient, it's going to give you the diagnosis that there is a pelvic fracture, and yes, uh, there's nothing that requires an immediate um, exolapthorocotomy or sternotomy. We're going to try to get them to IR, and this may be the source. And then number two, it'll help you define the type of pelvic fracture that you have fairly quickly, and especially if there's good diastasis or it's you know one of these APC fractures that are um, wide open it'll give you a good reason to apply that uh, binder. So I think this is a patient that if you can, it really would be helpful to get that pelvic x-ray.